Good morning. Uh, today, I would like to give a talk on organic photovoltaic devices for next generation indoor applications. So first of all, what is indoor uh, photovoltaic PV? Uh, it's very simple. Basically, it's a PV which has indoor light to generate power. And the two typical indoor light sources include a fluorescent lamp and a white LED. And you can see the light spectrum from a fluorescent lamp and from white LED. Uh, the main emission is in the visible, which is quite different to the typical AM 1.5G spectrum. And why indoor PV? Uh, probably we can cut, uh, classify in two types of applications. So the first one is the to power low consumption electronic devices. And like uh, what we may know about the small solar panel here in uh, calculator to power the calculator. And more recently, it, it, uh, it can be used with in, in the watch or mouse or the wireless keyboard to power the uh, electronics. But I think perhaps the most interesting application is the uh, on Internet of Things. So uh, because Internet of Things use uh, sensors which can have uh, low power consumption, so indoor PV can uh, meet this uh, requirement. So this is a hot topic and um, it could lead to like smart home, smart office, or, or build, smart building. A very uh, hot and interesting topic. So uh, how's it going with indoor PV so far? So uh, like uh, the uh, outdoor PV, silicon PV is, is dominant. Uh, and probably is the only co uh, commercial product at the moment for indoor PV. And similarly, uh, like outdoor PV, V5 PV has uh, high performance for for indoor as well, but it's also expensive. So our um, question is if there's any PV technology or potential PV technology which can have high performance and at the same time low cost. So we think OPV will be very good and the, the reason include uh, they can absorb strongly uh, in the visible light to increase the indoor light performance because the, the absorption can be turned easily. And they can be potentially low cost because they can be uh, made, on, uh, made by a scalable method. And it can lead to new indoor application as well because they are, can be fabricated on low weight uh, flexible substrates. So it can be integrated to, for example, a more curved surface for more diverse applications. And last but not least, the stability should be significantly better in indoor environment because basically there's no UV. The light intensity is much lower. The temperature is lower. Uh, so uh, the stability is expected to be uh, 
significantly better than outdoor condition. And now let's mo move on uh, the indoor performance. So a few years ago, we uh, studied the uh, OPV for indoor application because um, the efficiency uh, is quite low before this publication. Uh, because people mainly focus on the traditional PVHD PCBM system. And so there's not too much interest for OPV for indoor application. But uh, a few years ago, we re exam with uh, uh, more uh, latest material system like PCDTPT, PDB7. And you can see that on the left is the, the performance under AM 1.5G. And on the right is the performance under fluorescent, wild, uh, fluorescent lamp under 300 lux. So you can see all the efficiency of the polymer system, which is worked with PC, uh, PCBM, uh, uh, better, significantly better than under AM 1.5G. And the reason is because they, they absorb quite well in the visible. And you can see that uh, one interesting thing is the, the efficiency of the PCTPT is lower than PDB7 under AM 1.5G, but is higher uh, than PDB7 under 300 lux. And so the, the main finding here is first the, the efficiency under indoor lighting can be can be good and secondly it also uh, provides some design principle uh, for indoor application for example uh, the band gap a uh, little bit around 1.8 to 1.9 EV for indoor application and also it lit high VOC and the high VOC need to maintain uh, even at low light level. And based on this design uh, principle, uh, after two years of the last last paper, last funding, uh, we noticed there's a material called BTL which seems to fulfill the requirement about the band gap, 1.8 to 1.9 EV, and yes, I high VOC under one's uh, AM 1.5G. So we use this material with PCBM, and here you can see that the EQE spectrum uh, with the material under different solvent vapor treatment. And together, there's a spectrum from the white fluorescent lamp. And you can see the EQE within this uh, emission spectrum of the fluorescent lamp is very high. And we got a power conversion efficiency under 1000 nuts of 28%, which is the highest at that time. And it's really good. And it's better significantly better than silicon. And this is the beautiful thing or nice thing is that uh, it's not only cheaper, could be cheaper for OP for indoor application, but the performance is much uh, significantly better than silicon. And we noticed this power conversion efficiency may need to be further evaluated because there's no standard to measure the uh, power conversion efficiency under indoor condition. But what we uh, try to uh, stay here is that the, the efficiency can be really good and can be uh, significantly better than silicon. And, and this is highlighted in, in this channel uh, as an internal cover image. So in summary, uh, 
we try to show organic PV a promising for indoor, uh, indoor PV. And if you look at this table about the maximum power output under different LUTs, you can see silicon is the black one and OPV is the green one. So you can see it's already uh, better, significantly better than silicon and comparable to the gallium arsenide, the red one here. And on the right is about the output uh, maximum power density as a function of the, the year. So you can see there's uh, uh, the, the OPV uh, efficiency under indoor is keep increasing, particularly in recent years. So there are more and more research groups uh, working for indoor uh, OPV for indoor application, uh, particularly in the last couple of years. It's rapidly going. However, there is some challenge. For example, um, similar to life for outdoor application, upscaling is still an issue. But uh, for indoor application, maybe a small module uh, is sufficient to, to work with the sensors. And stability is another issue, although uh, there is um, the, the stability uh, should be better uh, under indoor condition, as I mentioned before. But there's very few uh, stability of OPV under indoor condition. So it need to be further investigated. And also, uh, more prototype device need to be demonstrated. For example, how the uh, OPV can be coupled with the electronics and optimize the electronics for a particular, uh, for example, Internet of Things applications. And as I said before, there's no standard for, for testing the, the power conversion efficiency under indoor condition. So uh, the, the com research community need to the, uh, have a consensus about the, the to develop a standard for testing. And there's already some, uh, a couple of paper uh, uh, published in this area. So finally, I would like to acknowledge the funding during that time from Sasola and the Welsh government and Swansea University, the team, uh, and the collaborator from Imperial College and the National Physical Laboratory.